Now, the term national development refers to the improvement of a country in all areas, including politics, uh, the economy, social, cultural, scientific, and material spheres. Now, uh, these cap the capacity of a country uh, to enhance citizens' uh, uh, standard of living is an indicator of uh, a nation's uh, uh, level of development. On the show, we are looking at national development the way to go. Joining us right about now is Ayo Arawo Jolu, who is a public affairs analyst. He joins us via Zoom on the show. So good to have you on the show. Good morning. Good morning, my brother. How are you today? We're good. I hope you're good too. I'm good. Um, I, I think a good place to even start this conversation would be uh, the current reality that we are faced with, uh, which is um, labor and um, organized labor and strike, which they have embarked on today. How does this impact on national development? Well, thank you very much. We are on the march again. You recall that sometimes last year on the occasion of Workers' Day, President uh, Tinubu was getting ready to be sworn in and he gleefully announced to the workers, kind of like a uh, for Ballet, I am going to not only giving you minimum wage, I will give you living wage. And the reality is that there is hunger in the land. Nigerians have slided into a far more dimension of uh, multi-dimensional poverty. In the Buhari days, we didn't really fully grasp the meaning, but this time around, those days in years past, even as, as at this time last year, maybe before President Tinubu came on board, nobody is saying we are hungry. If you walk, you will eat. But since President Tinubu came, we have seen even top civil ser service directors, they no longer can use their cars to the office. I'm talking about people who earn honest means of livelihood. They are not chopping money in their offices. They have no way to divert budgets and locations. People who work in the university, even professors now ride on Okada to get to their place of work. It's so bad that even for an average professor, because let me just say that, that those are the people we are looking up to, 1,000 naira makes a huge meaning and a huge difference. So you now see that even the elites, if you have a car, for example, and your battery has a problem, hmm. God forbid you may sell that car because there is no money to buy a new battery. Yeah. There is inflation, there is hyper inflation. What we were buying for 50,000 naira, for example, if you are talking about price of Gary, a bag of Gary was 50,000 naira. As at last week, that same bag of Gary will go for 155,000 naira. The hunger that is in the land is, uh, is something very serious. Even if you are working, you have like 300,000 in your hand. It cannot take you far beyond a week or two. This is the reason why nobody should be blaming labor. Labor took their time to arrive at that 650,000 minimum wage. You look at you live in Lagos. Okay. I live here in Abelkuta. I'm with you. Yeah, yes. I'd like to come in because, I mean, we'd we like to take the conversation one after the other. We'll come to the, uh, the, uh, the organized labor strike we began today, which I want to imagine you are also uh, your strike as well, because you work <laughs> in the public I, I space. You are a strike, so to speak. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we go there, let's talk about the reality on ground. As I said before uh, the break, before we ushered you in, we can 
continue to enumerate the problems that we face with as a nation. Uh, the things that led us here from the announcement of the removal of fuel subsidy by President Bola Tinubu, other policies that followed suit, other issues that, been, uh, that we, we've had to contend with as a people. But this morning, more than anything before, we want to find solutions, we want to prefer solutions to these issues so that our country can grow and develop in a way and manner that we want. And this morning, I want to make it a little skewed to the people. Uh, we've talked about governments in the last two, three weeks, we'll continue to talk about them, but let me begin from the uh, strike action which kicked off today by the organized labor. Uh, I'd like for you to deepen your, your, your I mean, analysis of that. You mentioned that although labor had gone down to 497,000 naira, uh, from as much as even 700,000 that they were asking for in some regions of the country earlier on. You think this is a, a, a well-placed priority going on strike or a misplaced one, whereas there are other issues, other uh, avenues, other ways to resolve the matter? Thank you. Strikes have become a historical. That is the only weapon that workers can use to get their rights. We must give it to Comrade Dajero and his TUC counterparts. In fact, we must applaud them because they have been patient. Maybe part of why they have not achieved real results. You are dealing with a government that have been on the field of propaganda for years of activism. So it's like activism versus activism. The labor is right. But the style of the labor shows that when you are dealing with the government like that of that one headed by President Tinubu, you may need to be harder. That was why when I had the news yesterday that they were meeting and that they will meet again today, and the you know governmental actors, the Attorney General of the Federation, you know using the same weapon that government have been using, going to court to make sure to compare to scare NLC and TUC of not going on strike. That one will not work. I, I, I first said that look, you have been meeting for for months, for weeks, and for the past few days. Once you see a reluctance of government, because what government is a government that promised a living wage is pushing out uh, 54,000, is pushing out 48,000, is pushing out 60,000. Uh, with due respect to that government, it's not a government that actually means well for the people. If the welfare of the average Nigerian worker, and by extension, the average Nigerian does not count in a government that is called a new hope, then maybe we have entered the one chance. Whatever it is, I insist that the labor strike is necessary and it should be definitive. If the government will not play ball, I expect that labor should now change their strategy and up the ant so that uh, they can get results. All right, yeah. thank you so much, Ayo. We should let you know that joining us live from our Abuja studios this morning uh, is uh, media practitioners also. We join us in just a moment, uh, the Independent Media and Policy Initiative uh, our chairman, who will join us in just a moment to speak on how we can move the country forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ayo, now, just as I said earlier on, the problems are enormous. Uh, in the space of what we can uh, achieve in the next three years, the president and his men have spent one whole year, and people's assessments are as good as you can imagine it. What do you see the, some light at the end of the tunnel, especially uh, what we can do to move this country forward? Let's start with what you expect uh, of the government, and then maybe we'll settle later for what the people need to do uh, towards building this nation and seeing it grow and develop in leaps and bounds. Well, thank you, Shil. I do not want to sound like a doomsday prophet, but even when this government has a need 
to instill hope in Nigerians. You see, you don't rule Nigerians, you don't you are leading, and you must rule and lead from the front and not from the back. I do not see light at the end of the tunnel. And this is the reason. We woke up to a story yesterday that President Tinubu and Vice President Shetiman, both of them have spent, you know, eight point, I think six billion naira in the last three months on international travels. Wow. That is outrageous. What a humongous amount that is spent. You know, you when you think that let's give this government a try, let's uh, you know endure, let's tighten the belt tomorrow. You hear news that will make you to fall down. You don't lead government like that. You are asking us to tighten the belt, and you are not ready. One solution that I see. I, 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 I must stay on chain. We would yes. One solution, okay, that I see is that gov, gov, uh, President Tinubu should rule with compassion. He should cut back on his international trip. Today is in America, tomorrow is in the Caribbean, so he's going here and there, up and down, up and down, with, um, you know, a lot of money is being wasted. I will tell you from the Zimbabwe experience, the Zimbabwe president, who is about uh, two years in office now, he told the secret of how you can bring a nation back from the brinks of Kula. He said two days before he was sworn in, they brought papers, some government officials, and said, so we are signing about $1.8 million to buy any car of your choice that you want in your convoy. And the man asked them, say, wait a minute, the outgoing president, does he use a car? Does the car have engine? Does it have tire? Can it move? I'm not going to buy a car. That is the one. The one that has been in use for years is the one I will use. And he boasted. In two years, the man has not bought one vehicle for himself. If he did not buy for himself, no minister will have any fleet of cars that are just born. But what did you have here? President Tinubu came into the office, and in the first one month, maybe two weeks, he has sent an appropriation bill, 70 billion naira for uh, the lawmakers, 160 billion naira to take care of the cars of senators and other legislators. He even bought about 1.5 billion naira worth of SUV vehicles for the office of the first lady who does that i think the government is not is not sensitive there appears to be a disconnect between those who are ruling us and we that are you know on the floor i you know a government will be sensitive a government that knows that things are bad because that's their usual return they will say ah buhari finished everything Past government free everything, it should not come and continue the same way. No wonder if a government set out to say, I will continue from where Buhari stopped, that means that this nation has been on reverse gear. I have not seen anything, no action of government to say that mm. ah, this second year in office that we are going to get anywhere. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, I, 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 oh, so thank you. Thank you so very much for. Uh, that position. I, I'm looking at um, a national development plan uh, 2021 to 2025 that, that came about during the, uh, the last administration. And then you all understand, we, we always say this, that gov governance, uh, government is continuum. Um, I mean, good thing it is still the APC. Uh, we're looking at a supposed plan for uh, national development by the All Progressives Congress. And um, highlights here are economic diversification, uh, investment in infrastructure, uh, security and good governance, uh, educated education and a healthy population, uh, poverty alleviation and economic and social development across states. Now these are all the, the highlights for the, uh, the nation's uh, 
Development Plan 2021 to 2025. Uh, I, 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 uh, maybe you should just hold your thoughts. Hold your thoughts one one second. Uh, I, uh, we we are being joined also uh, in our Buddha studios by Ni Akinsiju, who is a uh, Okay, he's joining us via Zoom. He's a veteran journalist. He joins us still on this conversation of national development, which way uh, to go. Uh, Ani, it's so good to have you on the show. Thank you so much. It's a privilege. It is an honor to have you join us. Have you been following the conversation with Ayo so far? Yeah, well, no, no, not much, actually. Uh, I think I have a network issue. But I've just been getting the spattering of it. Okay, I'm, I'm hoping that you, we, can, we can stay with you all through the, the show. We're looking at national development and which way to go, and then we are, we are looking at where we, where we are coming from. Uh, this government, this administration, what they have done, how they have, how they have treated the conversation of, of national development vis-a-vis -vis their spending, their, expen their expenditure, uh, the signals they pass to the people of the country, uh, and all of that. What's your thoughts on uh, uh, the, the, tra the trajectory of governance in Nigeria in the last um, 365 days. Uh. Uh, so, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, there, there is actually a temptation to generalize uh, emotions and sentiments you know, around uh, the, the, the trajectory of governance uh, since uh, the Tinubu president, I mean, since the Tinubu presidency. I, but I, I always love to look at the flip side uh, and look at um, the Nigerian trajectory. So, you know, uh, starting in 1960 and on our Independence Day, uh, what exactly was the intention of our founding fathers? Uh, the primary intention was to grow a nation uh, where, of course, you have uh, a, a large community or a large population of very educated people, professionals uh, going forward. And uh, in doing that, uh, the resources of states, you know, was uh, provided uh, to drive that, that vision. Uh, so pr principally, the founding funder, funders expected a country that would be depend that would be independent truly, you know, by the professionalization of the population. And of course, providing his of uh, economic movement, you know, from uh, from one tire to the other, by for, for the people, these uh, professionals, as it were. So you had free education in the in the south, in the southwest, and uh, of course a lot of activi uh, activities uh, around that uh, education too, uh, educational development in the southeast. You know, uh, you have infrastructural uh, uh, growth. I mean, infrastructural deliveries uh, in terms of roads and uh, hospitals and all that too. Then, of course, at the other, at, the, at, at, at another level, you by the time we got into the seventies and we became a superpower in terms of uh, oil crude oil production, uh, we had so much money uh, that even the, the head of state at that time declared that we don't know what to do with our money, you know, but how to spend. I mean, we don't even know how to spend our money. And of course, there was a, a more uh, a creation of an environment where. Uh, the people were virtually, you know, sloping on the on the resources, on the crude oil resources, and that led to the subsidy, you know, subsidizing, uh, subsi subsidizing the, uh, our major source of uh, foreign exchange, uh, major source of uh, of earnings, you know, either at the level of foreign exchange or even at the level of domestic uh, uh, domestic resources, uh, domestic uh, income. So what I'm trying to say essentially is that uh, we've had an economy that had uh, created a, a dependency relationship between the people and uh, and uh, the the resources you know and the resources of states now the problem there is no there is no exact problem in that because what it does to my mind uh, if you if one reads the history of a socialist uh, socialist countries or socialist oriented ideologically driven countries what it's uh, the the idea is of course to make the people the primary source of states, and in doing that, the thinking is that uh, after a period of time, the, the people becomes not just uh, not just professionalized, but their earnings, I mean, their returns onto the economy is also substantial. But as it were, we we drove this vision, uh, unfortunately, on the platform of corruption. 
and that uh, we, we we have not been able to as a country as a sovereign country we have not been able to achieve the vision as it were you know as a people uh, so much that uh, we have become dependent uh, unfortunately uh, we have not driven human capital development as envisioned by the founding fathers uh, and uh, of course unfortunately too we have not even been able to create a strong recruitment uh, process you know from uh, the the uh, the professionals the educated elites that the system had thrown up through free education uh, so most of the people that were trained free of charge more or less in nigeria couldn't even find their ways into educating into government uh, so you you had more or less the drag of the society run perhaps until recently you had the drag of the society managing and administering the, uh, the the country and what what do you expect so i i believe that uh, we cannot continue to do what we have been doing you know since 1960 and expect uh, 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 different results uh, we, right. we would just be going around in circle all right you know? uh, so at, at this point in time there's a need for a paradigm shift all right and, and that's a very good place to i mean continue from with you uh that paradigm shift is what we seek this morning that can take us towards a better country by all standards uh, I saw one of the articles that you wrote, and I also follow you closely. I also know that you belong to your chairman of a group that really, uh, really rallies um, journalists with uh, regards to what's happening in the country. How you make your comments known based on uh, your perception of what is going on in the country. If you if you want to assess the performance of President Bola Tunu in the last 365 days, uh, how would you describe it? That's part one. The part two. What are those things that need to be fixed in earnest? Workers are on strike today. What are those things that need to be done such that this country can start to move the way he promised us that it would? Well, I, I think sincerely the administration inherited a challenging uh, environment, uh, economically, socially, security-wise, and, uh, and uh, such others. And uh, I believe that uh, the two uh, pillars of his reforms, that is the withdrawal of subsidy and uh, the unification of the foreign exchange windows, uh, perhaps important, you know, fundamental to uh, the development of uh, the country going forward. Because the, the, the truth of the matter is that uh, uh, we cannot continue to sustain the dependency economic relationship we had, you know, until uh, May uh, 2023. Uh, I, we, if we had continued at that level with that trajectory, what is obvious by now is that we would have had a bankrupt uh, economy, a bankrupt state of economy, so much that uh, I am not too sure government will be able to even pay, federal government will be able to even pay salaries of its, uh, of its staff, not to talk of providing infrastructure uh, for the rest of the Nigerian people. So uh, it is for, it is now to see how uh, those policies can be properly calibrated in such a way that it will reduce the pain that is being inflicted. There is pain, actually, and the, pre the president himself had considered to that, you know, and uh, also uh, publicly even acknowledged that that uh, the, the the pains arising uh, from uh, those uh, the, impl the implementation of those policies uh, are quite uh, obvious. And uh, but I I believe that uh, as soon as possible, if uh, those uh, if those plans. Uh, those interventions that are being planned are uh, properly implemented. I think to a large extent it will attenuate, attenuate uh, the, the impact. Then uh, going forward, there's a need to also have a governized uh, Nigerian people. Uh, we, we need to understand, the, as, as a people, we need to understand the fact that uh, perhaps we also have a huge role to play. You know, uh, so, uh, in, and in playing that, we need agencies of government or even civil society organization to rally uh, the people around their policies of state in such a way that uh, people understand I know the the issues and the economic uh, the economic uh, policies that are being implemented at this time but again uh, yeah I had Ayo talking about uh, uh, the president reducing his travels yes well it depends on which uh, on the dimension of the travels 
for me, if the president had to travel to, to engage uh, foreign investors, to engage uh, foreign, uh, what do you call it, uh, foreign government on possible uh, cooperation, on possible uh, invitation to come do things in Nigeria, I, I don't see, I don't think there's anything All wrong right. in that. Me, but well, what well, well, wrong well, is One moment, number. please. Now, I think Ayo will have to respond to that, but we have a caller from Abuja who uh, we want to uh, bring on the show at the moment. Akeju, thank you for joining us on News Hub. Good morning to you. Yeah, sure. I'm good. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning again. You're welcome. Um, yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was actually listening to Akeju, who is a good friend of mine, but I think I want him to really talk to us and address the issue of... Uh, politics and policy as it affects the administrator because most of the problems they are having naturally are caused by the administrator. The administrator and public servant. They actually mislead the elected politicians in trying to make them to be corrupt. I think this issue has to be you know discussed extensively so that the administrators are not put in a position as to corrupt the elected uh, politicians. Most of these elected politicians are actually corrupt with the intention of doing something to better the people of Nigeria. But when they get to that place, they get corrupted by the so-called administrators. Unfortunately, I was one of the guys that are still sound, but I know that what a lot of public administrators actually corrupt the elected position. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's let you also know that we'll be joined by our correspondent in the course of the show to bring you what's happening across uh, the Federation as the lab organized labor push for the strike today. How would it end? Let's come back to you, Ayo. Uh, Ni just uh, asked a question. I actually made a, a statement that, look, uh, for you, you feel that the government president should cut down on his travels, but he says, whereas they're necessary, he should go ahead and travel. How do you respond to that? Thank you, Shum. Uh, well, special salute to the both me I do not uh, altogether disagree with, I align largely with his thoughts. However, whatever travels that will make the government, you know, waste away 8.6 billion naira within three months, then there is corruption somewhere. Whatever will make the government sink 8 billion naira you know, within three months on travels, then there is a there is a, there is a there is a joke there. I, I think the government of President Tinubu needs help, and this they must acknowledge. When he came on board, you know, we saw the video. We saw how, you know, before he started, the, before they gave him the mic. We knew the struggle that came to signing the dotted lines that day. But the moment he got the mic and just said, subsidy is gone. You see, after about a week, they asked him in an African country, was it part of your speech? He said, sincerely, it was not part of my speech. I think a spirit just came on me. Hey, it is time to stop running governance by the spirit. Spirit cannot run governance for us in Nigeria. It is time the government beckon on people. You see, there is a disconnect. A day like May 29, when we should be taking stock, when the president should be telling us what, how to remedy the hunger, poverty in the land, we shifted our attention to national anthem. You know, they, you, you need to do, a government needs to do what the people need. Mm. What the people want. People are dying. We are talking about that thing. You see, profligacy and wastages must be cut down. We know how you go. We are in an era of social media. The vouchers that are flying around, you know, you don't just dismiss that. Look at the punch report of yesterday, 8 billion naira in, in three months. That's, that's humongous. That is outrageous. And I think all lovers of Nigeria should be able to tell the president the truth that you are running this government of profligacy, which 
uh, Buhari was doing and which you continue. See, Buhari put the nation on reverse gear. Good, he has gone. You should not come now to head towards that same direction. We are talking about uh, economic diversification. I have not seen anything. This is how the president will spend four years or do eight years. There will be no single addition to refineries. Which diversification are we talking about then? I think I can. Let me just stop for the moment. Oh, invite uh, uh, Ni. I'm sure you want to respond to uh, the figures that um, um, I had just uh, reeled out about how much this um, admission has spent on travels in the last three in the last three months, um, coupled with um, attention being fixed on the national anthem, as against um, dealing with real economic issues. Yes, you could also respond to the caller's concern. He talked about policy direction, uh, which is for him is uh, one thing that he finds missing in this administration. Lee, let's, let's, let's get your thoughts on this. Well, I think if we start with the caller, uh, he was actually talking about the relationship between uh, administrators and the and the government. Uh, that is the politicians, elected politicians in government and civil servants, you know, uh, that uh, there is a tendency for civil servants to corrupt uh, the uh, the, politi the elected politicians. And to a large extent, I agree with him. Uh, but again, the box stops on the table of the politicians because they are the elected uh, people, elected Nigerians that are supposed, elected for the purpose of oversighting government and governance. Uh, so it is this, uh, is this set of people that are required, you know, to give, uh, to supervise even the civil servants. If they fall, uh, if they fall to the temptation of the civil servants and get, uh, and get corrupted, uh, well, I, I think that that should be the responsibility and, uh, of course, uh, the fault, you know, of such individuals. Uh, so, uh, but I, I think to a large extent, uh, there is a continued need to have people of substance and quality in government through, uh, through elected uh, political platforms. And uh, when you have that kind of... Uh, uh, scenario is is likely it's most likely that uh, the temptation offered by the civil servant uh, would be resisted uh, that is one then two on uh, the on the president travels i i'm not too sure about that uh, that uh, uh, the figure it's uh, 1 billion uh, i um, i try as much as possible to verify figures before i play them in the public uh, space uh, yes punch might have uh, might have uh, uh, published it, but again, the source, again, uh, it's important to verify. But that notwithstanding, if uh, if you spend $8 billion, uh, I mean, Naira, for instance, and you are able going forward to secure uh, businesses, ventures, and, uh, and possible investment uh, that would, that will, that will be in 10 or 100 manifolds, I, I don't see anything wrong with that because I understand what networking is. Even in Nigeria, as a businessman, if you want to do things, you need to connect, you need to relate. You cannot stay indoors and believe that uh, you can expand your your vision or your horizon, your business horizon. Uh, engagement, consultation, uh, sitting down, it's important in international economic diplomacy. And I think we have to understand that nobody the foreign capital as it were that we are so desirous of foreign capital is a very sensitive capital it goes to where it is desired it goes to where it is canvassed and the more than 192 countries around the world are always seeking foreign capitals especially in the uh, in the bracket of the g8 you know those are the those are the people that have a uh, they have so much, you know, to to give out, either at the level of government or at the level of individuals. Now we are we at, at the level of government, we can see how successful we have. We are seeing countries, you know, desiring to do business with us. I have been following, I've been tracking that. But we have issues with foreign investors. We have people with individual investors who have to come in into the country. And these are the kind of money we need. We are not I'm not talking of portfolio investment here. We have we have that, you know, but I'm talking of foreign investors that should be able to come into this country and establish companies, you know, so that you, it, it is part of the, it is part of the strategy to enhance and enlarge the economy when you have foreign investors in the, in the economy. So right. uh, part of doing that is to go move out and talk to people outside the country. It's, right. I, I, I don't think uh, there's, uh, there's anything wrong by that. Sorry, please. 
Now, in and the maybe, team maybe one, the one moment, I, I like, I like you to, to land on that, but we have to go on a very short break. I note, I've noted your queue out, so you queue in when we return after this break. You're still watching this up. We're discussing national development. The, which way to go? Uh, we've talked a lot about challenges. Can we now start to pull for solutions towards nation building and development? Do join us again. We still have with us Nia Kishiju as well as Ayo Arowojolu. How to become a beauty queen in five easy steps. One, get prepared and register early. Two, impress panelists at the auditions. Three, stand out and dazzle at boot camps. Four, strut the stage at the main event. Five, show the world and the universe you have all it takes and then enjoy your crowning moment. <laughs> For all you need to know about the journey to becoming a queen, tune into Crowning Moments, showing this month exclusively on Silverbird Television. Stream live episodes on our YouTube page at Miss Universe Nigeria. Nigeria. Crowning Moments, make every single moment count. Crowning Moments premieres on Sunday, June 9 at 7.30 p.m. This is Miss Universe Nigeria. The universe is watching. Stand still, no movement, no entry, no flight, nothing. We are just outside. The, the, the gate is locked, as you can see. No movement, nothing. This is MM2 gate, locked. All right, the video you are watching right now is a situation report at Next. the at uh, the Bertilla Mormon International Airport, local, local wing, the domestic wing of the International Airport. Uh, update on the strike as, uh, you know, moved by the organized uh, uh, labor. Now, this is what we're talking about, the level of disruption that this could bring to economic activities in Nigeria. Uh, just one day of strike, how this would impact the aviation sector. People are going to be stranded. Uh, either tickets uh, would have to be uh, reviewed or moved forward and all of that. You could tell that this would impact the aviation sector and several other sectors in Nigeria. Those are updates from uh, the ongoing strike by organized uh, labor. We are still, still news up. We are still looking at the concerns around national development. We have our two guests still uh, with us this morning. But how time flies when you're having a great time. Gentlemen. I would like you to react to the video you've just seen. Uh, it's important we begin to dissect the, the, the impact that um, a single day strike could have on the nation's economy. I'll start off with you, Ayo. Uh, talk to us how you want to react to that video that I've just, uh, just played right about now. Well, the impacts and the effects will certainly be very devastating if it continues that way. But I, I see something about this government. Maybe because um, they have been long in activism and they control, you know, the people on the streets largely. I must acknowledge first, you see, President Tinubu has capacity, or so we believe, and he has massive goodwill. But you see, they are taking the people for a ride. If this strike continues, we just see just one day, 
And if the tendency is, uh, well, let's go to court, let's, uh, there's nothing the labor can do. There are so much that the labor can do. And it's needless. You know, you set up a tripartite committee, you allocated humongous amount of money for their city, and you have been sitting for some days, for some months. And at the end of the day, what you are offering, you see, you, the, the, this government, Nigeria, the way it is, only has a spending problem. If they can contain the profligacy, you don't give workers, you struggle to give them minimum wage, and you are taking maximum wage and maximum comfort the humongous amount of money at the National Assembly. It, these are things that are open to the eyes of all. And there seems to be a new narrative, like uh, what Akishi just said. The tendency to want to blame civil servants for the corruption in Nigeria. Beta Edu is not a civil servant. She was the one that, against civil service rule, you know, made vouchers transferable to a personal account. You see, these are issues. And right, corruption right. is at the heart of everything that government is doing. Right. If we cut down on all of this, we can pay people, pay workers, you know, if they are just due. Right. An average civil servant today, I use myself as an example. I buy 50,000 naira for fuel which was evaporate for a whole week. By implication, I'm spending 200,000 naira, you know, to, to move about in a month. That's too much. So we must feel what the people are feeling. But all, right, all right. this effort uh, compared, right. be patient, keep tight the bed. It's not going to work because right, we right. see what they are doing upstairs there. All right, thank you so much. I guess uh, your point is as, uh, uh, is as clearly made as it should be. Ani, so moving forward, what do you think the president and his men should do to move this country forward? Because it seems as if the people are very angry and a lot of them hungry. Do they, do they know that? Some people... That's going on to Niyi. That's for Niyi, Ayo. That's for Niyi. You know, uh, how, do, how does the president fix see, things? Because we have to move on. I can see Ayo is so fired up, you know, <laughs> but it's all right. But the, 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 the truth of the matter is that uh, the, the Nigerian situation deserves a practical, you know, approach. And to understand... Appearances of our challenge of challenges that we have, but to look at the roots, you know, of uh, this of this matter. For instance, the labor uh, asking for uh, for uh, more than four hundred thousand naira per month, you know, uh, as uh, base, as I mean as minimum uh, wage. Uh, do we also first look at that uh, the practicability of that? Is, is it possible? And we are not talking when you are talking about engagement of engagement with labor on uh, minimum wage. We are not just talking about the federal government. Oh, uh, you know, it's always very interesting, David, uh, to uh, listen to sides of the stories that matter to the we people. We are talking about the federal. All right, uh, we missed out on th those lines, and we do hope to bring you back on the show, Ni. Nee. We missed out on a lot of even time to speak with you. We'll be speaking with Ni nee Akishiju. Uh, we call him veteran journalist by all standards. He also uh, is uh, really uh, in tandem. He works with a lot of journalists to ensure that Nigeria uh, gets better. Also, Ayao Julu is a public affairs analyst. He just showed he's also a public servant who's feeling the brunt of what the economic situation uh, is like so far. Ayo, we well, thank you for joining us on the program. We do look forward to seeing you again uh, very soon. Uh, thank you also, Ni. We look forward to having you again.